the kind of projects that we've been setting up uh, and doing some preliminary work on range from uh, understanding the viscoelastic properties, understanding the properties of the composite for uh, space structures where uh, there's no atmosphere to damp out vibrations, to um, consumer industries like the uh, computer industry and disk drive technology has got to a point where uh, the head's moving so fast in the disk drive and you've got to stop at a precise location to find the data. And any uh, continued vibration of that uh, head uh, leads to uh, a slowdown of the rate of, of data transfer. So that's an area. Uh, we're even using these kind of tests. We're starting to move to areas of, uh, uh, we're starting to look at tire technology, for instance. And uh, not only from the, the part of the tire that looks like a fiber reinforced composite, but also looking at uh, long-term um, changes to the, the tread material itself and the, the tire compound. But in addition, we have some projects going on with um, advanced foam technologies, and these are insulation foams that would be used on uh, Space Shuttle as an insulation system. Uh, that project really stems from a need to be able to apply that material in both a more cost-effective way as well as a more environmentally friendly way. and. Uh, that's a, a thermal spray process rather than the conventional processes that have been used, which, which tend to be um, um, performed more in a, in a manufacturing facility and are definitely more difficult to perform and have a lot more chemical uh, residue. From a lab standpoint, uh, we've really been moving um, heavily into uh, techniques that allow us to understand materials based on smaller tests sets smaller test sizes and we've become very interested in um, the determination and understanding of, of viscoelastic properties of composites. Um, I think a lot of the mechanisms are pretty well understood but the material properties aren't necessarily there to use in design and we see so many applications now that could use precise damped designs. And uh, so for instance one of the pieces of equipment that we've been trying to raise enough cash uh, to uh, purchase would go along with the suite of equipment that sits right behind me right now. And that would be a dynamic mechanical tester, a DMTA. And what that allows you to do is take a, a relatively small sample and vibrate it. And in doing so, you can also raise the temperature, you can change the frequency. And that allows you to start to look at the material properties over a wide range. And in fact, uh, there's been a lot of interest lately in not only looking at um, the viscoelastic properties, but also using this as a way to predict uh, long-term degradation of materials, long-term failure, which is really critical because m many of the engineering designs that we're doing today, we expect to last more than a lifetime. And how do we generate the data to prove that they're going to be safe to that uh, time?